Hey guys, Carlson here to wrap up Unit 1 notes with you by going over Chapter 2, The Chemical Level of Organization. A lot of these uh, topics should be review for you, so if they're not, go back and look over Chapter 2 a little more thoroughly. Um, remember that characteristics of living and non-living things are due to the arrangement of atoms. He talked a lot about matter and its interactions in chemistry, um, or maybe in the small portion of biochemistry that you learned in biology. Um, this basic knowledge is helpful to understand the levels of organization because we will be breaking down each body system at its cellular, tissue, organ, and organ system levels. So 2 uncovers the fact that atoms are the basic particles of matter. They're the smallest that we concern ourselves with here. The elements are made up of solely one type of atom and they are identified by their atomic number. The electrons control their interactions. So this table here kind of gives you the principal elements in the human body and how they're significant. We will talk about them each more in depth as we, uh, this, as we get to the main ideas in each unit. Now, chemical bonds are forces formed by atom interactions. They can form ions. Um, when you break a bond or put a bond together, you are actually going through a chemical reaction. When we get atoms bonded with shared electrons, you get molecules. Two or more elements put together are compounds. Those ionic bonds are the ones that are going to form the ions, and they can be positive or negative, therefore forming cations and anions. Or we can have covalent bonds where electrons are shared. Um, that unequal sharing is actually going to create something called polarity, which we're most concerned with because that's how water gets its special properties that are very important for the human body. And then we also have hydrogen bonds that can affect the shapes and properties of molecules that are also very important to the human body as well. Now the most common ions in body fluid, um, that table is shown right above here. A lot of these are electrolytes that you are familiar with and we'll talk about them in more detail here shortly. Alright, 2-3 uh, gets a little bit more into the chemical reactions. Remember that chemical reactions have reactants and products. Um, all the reactions in the body are known as metabolism and they can have different products. Uh, catabolism is a breakdown of complex molecules, and then anabolism is a synthesis of new organic molecules. So just kind of be able to recognize those terms. But the catabolism is how cells actually gain energy to power the functions of the body. All right, and I'm sure you remember enzymes, they catalyze uh, specific biochemical reactions. Um, and the way that they do this is because they are catalysts. And they can actually uh, decrease the amount of activation energy needed. Uh, to start a reaction. That's what this uh, diagram here, this chart is showing you. You have a reactant and without an enzyme it takes all this time here uh, to get the activation energy required to get a product. With an enzyme you can see how that peak or that time frame is shortened and you end up with a stable product. And there are two types of enzymatic reactions. We have exergonic which um, heat is released and then endergonic which heat is absorbed. Alright, 2.5 talks about the difference between inorganic versus organic products, and we're really talking carbon or no carbon here. Um, organic means there is carbon, inorganic means there's not. A uh, couple vocabulary terms that may or may not be familiar to you, but uh, nutrients are essential elements and molecules that are obtained from diet, so we have to, have to actually consume those through food. Metabolites are molecules broken down or synthesized inside our bodies, and they can be inorganic or organic. 2.6 covers the physiological systems that depend on water, which of course is our body. It is the most important inorganic component. It's an excellent solvent, has a high heat capacity, um, helps with lots of pretty much all of our metabolic reactions. And in inorganics, ionize or dissociate in water, which is how we get our ions. And remember I told you that the water molecule is polar because of an uneven sharing of electrons and therefore it distributes charges and creates that polarity and again water special properties. pH um, is vital for homeostasis in the body and if you look on this chart here you can see that blood is kind of between 7 and 8. Uh, the range that blood can be at is actually very very small. If your blood pH gets less than 7 you would actually go into a coma. If it gets greater than 7.8 you actually would go into uncontrolled muscle contractions. So blood pH is something that's quite frequently monitored if you're in the hospital and depending on what kind of things are going on there. So we'll talk about how pH affects the body too um, in later chapters. Um, this uh, section, 2.8, is a review of acids, bases, and salts. Um, remember they're inorganic but they are very important to our body. We know that acids release hydrogen ions, bases are going to remove them. 
And salts are basically like your electrolytes. And they're kind of like a switch and they control muscle movement. Again, we'll talk about them more in detail when they come into play in different units. We also have buffers. They maintain pH within normal limits. So we can take things like Alka-Seltzer, Toms, and Rolaids to tie up excess hydrogen ions when our stomachs become a little too acidic and uh, our, they get a little upset. And so that's why people normally take these kinds of medications to help with that. There are There is more information in Chapter 18 about buffers and we'll talk about that when we get there with the uh, digestive and urinary systems. All right, 2.9 um, through 2.12 basically talks about our biggest organic compounds. So we're gonna start with carbohydrates. Uh, they have a, a, carb, a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen ratio of one to two to one, most important as an energy source. And we know there are mono, di, and polysaccharides types of carbohydrates. Uh, lipids, they have a carbon, hydrogen ratio of one to two. They are water insoluble, so they do not break down in water. Some good examples are fats, oils, and waxes. Um, and classes include fatty acids, fat steroids, and phospholipids. And the phospholipids are probably the most important to us because they make up our cell membranes. 211 talks about proteins, which are formed from amino acids, and they contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. They're linked by peptide bonds. They have a range, very, very large range of function, which is uh, determined by their shape. And again, they're kind of like our biological catalysts. Um, they help with enzymatic uh, reactions. And the substrate is usually the reactant, which binds to an active site to form a product. And again, they're very, very specific. Uh, 212 covers our nucleic acids. They store and process information. We probably know them more as DNA and RNA. And they are made up of chains of nucleotides, which are formed by a sugar phosphate group and a nitrogenous base, shown in this diagram here. And more specifically for DNA and RNA, we have their exact um, nucleotides here. All right, 213 talks about ATP, a high energy compound used by cells. Um, so you have adenine, ribose, a sugar, and then three phosphate groups for ATP. Um, it is, like I said, the most important high energy compound. If we add ATP or add a phosphate, we get ATP. If we release a phosphate, we turn into ADP. And so we add a P when energy, to make energy available or have like a stored battery. When we release a phosphate, that means energy was needed and utilized. Okay, our last section, 214, talks about how chemicals form functional units called cells. So our biochemical building blocks form cells, which we know that a large amount of cells are going to build up into tissues, into organs, and then organ systems, which again is why we kind of have to touch on this topic. All right, uh, chapter two review is on pages 51 through 54. You got to know those key terms that are on page 51, and I'll see you guys later.